It was a follow-up to my previous post on designing and creating a jig for repeatable laser cutting or laser engraving. In this post, we're going to be looking at creating a jig for this object here. So this is a folding clipboard, um, and it does fit in the Glowforge with the crumb tray in. It's 0.47 inches thick, so it's actually a really nice project if you're interested in just doing some engraving. So for these, I was putting a Flight Squadron logo on one side and then their call signs as well as some badges on the other side. So I decided when I was designing this that because I was doing the outside, it made the most sense to make a jig that just kind of focused on aligning these little pieces here. So these hinges are the deepest part of the actual object at 0.47 inches. Um, and what I just designed was a jig that had a hole for the clipboard piece and then the hinges so that I could line it up using that, um, place them face down. And then it also helped me ensure that it was always facing the right way. So instead of cutting one giant rectangle and placing these in and potentially flipping this from side to side, I decided to create holes only for the areas that are actually kind of sticking off of the clipboard. So now that we've kind of seen the project, you can see my measurements here. So this really helps me kind of pay attention to how to actually make my jig. So I've measured the length of this object here, the overall height from rivet to rivet, the length and height of the actual clipboard, and then of the clipboard piece itself. So I'm gonna come into Illustrator and I'm gonna show you what my current jig looks like, and then we're going to design a new one. So you can see here, what I did and what I usually do first is I create a rectangle or something that's about the size of the object. And you can actually see that here in this orange rectangle. And then I just created boxes based on the locations and sizes of these objects here that I'm trying to create recesses for. And then I just created a large cutout because I want all my jigs to have rounded corners. That's not important. It's just something I decided to do. So then from there, I put in all of the different names and what I will do in the Glowforge interface or what I did do, so to speak, is I would just swap out the names each time here. So I'm gonna show you how I actually set up that lineup. So I'm gonna create a new file and I'm going to make it 12 by 20 with a single artboard. And doing that ensures that no matter what I do to change the file, as long as it's 12 by 20, every time I upload it to the Glowforge interface, it will upload in the exact same spot on the artboard every time. So I'm gonna create that. And then first step is let's create a rectangle that is 8.75 by 11.5. So you can do that by clicking the rectangle tool. I'm gonna to turn off my fill because I don't want a white fill. And then I'm just gonna make sure I'm looking here, 11.5 by 8.75. Click once, put in 11.5, and you can see I'm already in inches, 8.75. But even if you weren't inches, if you just type in IN or MM or CM, whatever measurement you're trying to use, it will automatically adjust that. And then there we go. So here is my first object. So there is my main rectangle. And now from there, I know I wanna create the boxes for this and that's 1.875 so just as a note i always round up a little bit just to give a teeny bit of wiggle room this is not something where if it's 0.005 off you're going to notice it i'm not engraving multiple layers on top of each other or anything like that it's not super critical that the lineup is a thousand percent perfect so just know if you use my measurements that they're just slightly rounded up just to make sure that everything fits and it's not too tight so the actual width of this area, so from rivet to the bottom of the rivet here, is about, and this is the only measurement I don't have in here, it's about 2.5 inches. So let's go back and let's create a rectangle that matches that, so 0.25. So that's the height, the width is 1.875 by 0.25, I'm gonna click OK. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the color of this because I'm not gonna cut out the rectangle for this. I'm just using that as a guide for placement. I'm gonna make that orange, swap the colors and then turn off the fill. And then I know for a fact this is centered. So all I gotta do is line it up with the center. And if it's you can't find it or for some reason it's not clicking, one trick is to turn on your rulers. So I'm gonna hit Command R and then I'll bring up my rulers. The other trick, and probably a little bit better, is just to grab both objects and go to your align here. 
If you don't see that, it's under Window Align. Grab both objects, align to Selection, and hit Center, and that's going to align those. Now, I also know that the little holes are above my measure up here in 8.75, so I really should just probably do this. But truthfully, I don't really mind if it's a little bit wide. I could just open this up just a little bit just to make sure it's going to fit. Not super important, but there we go. I'm going to then Alt drag, or I think it's Option drag on the Mac, and repeat this object down here. So that should give me a nice tight fit for those. Now the next step is to create the box for the actual clip. And that's 4.75 by 1.25. So height is 4.75 by 1.25. And then I also know that that's at the very end here. So I'm going to bring that here. I'm going to try and get it centered. It's going to try and center it. I think that looks centered. Um, and then again, for this, because my, my lineup is not super, super important, I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. That way I have room for the little bit that's going to kind of jut off here. Just in case they're like riveted slightly crooked or something, you can never really trust that every object's manufactured exactly the same every time. So there are my holes for my jig. And the next thing I'm going to do is create a guideline down the center. And this is important for me because I want to make sure when I go back to my Glowforge interface, if we can pop it up here, that's not it. Here we go. If we come over here to our Glowforge interface, I have a center line here and an alignment guide here so that I knew how to line up both the logos and then make sure that my text was centered every time. So let's actually recreate that. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to do a different color because once again, I'm not cutting these. I just need them to exist in the Glowforge interface. And then I'm going to create a line segment. And all you do is click and hold to open up this panel here. I'm going to grab from center to center. That's going to give me that. And then as for like the lineup of the texture, I did that arbitrarily. There wasn't a special height it needed to be. It was something I discussed with the customer about, about where they wanted it. And there we go. So now I've created a baseline and then a center line so that I can tell when it's actually centered within this panel. So these are my guides. These are my actual cutting pieces. And then this is my, um, my clipboard. So I'm actually going to round its edges by clicking with the white arrow tool, which is the direct selection tool. I'm just dragging. It just kind of gives me like a more accurate picture of what I'm looking at. So let's actually do something that might help us visualize this a little bit better. And I'm going to show you a little trick that sometimes I do anyway. So I am going to go to File and Place. And I'm going to go find that image. So let's grab our clipboard measurements image. This one doesn't have the top measurement, but it'll still work. And I'm going to drop it in. You can see it's huge. So I'm going to Command Z and I'm going to bring it in smaller. Place. Let's go grab it. And this time I'm just going to drag it in. And then I'm going to set that behind. And what I did was I hit Command Shift and then the left bracket. You can also right mouse click and hit like a range, I think. Well, at least in InDesign you can. But in this case, it's even easier if I just go to Layers, create a new layer, and with this selected, drag it onto its own layer, drop it behind, which it did not do. Come here. So if you click on something, sometimes it'll open up all the layers inside. So that actually lets you see like every object inside your layer. Now that it's behind, I'm going to double click the layer right here in the blank area. I'm going to hit dim images to 25% and I will leave it like that. So that should make it a template. It looks like it's not dimming it right now, but that's okay. We're going to adjust it anyway. And then I'm going to scale this right there. So now you can actually see how my lineup looks in comparison to my actual object. So let's rotate it just a teeny bit, get that right in there. It looks like it needs to scale up over. Rotate, perfect. So if I go back and double click this now and I hit template, it should dim the image there. So there we go. I actually have the image as the background and it allows us to visualize how this is fitting. So one thing I want to do is rotate it because it's actually facing the wrong direction. 
So there you go. So that gives you a better picture of kind of what we're looking at. And sometimes when I'm creating a jig, I will actually do this. I will scan the object flat or take a really, really straight on picture of it and then adjust it to height using a rectangle like this, just so I know I have the basic scale correct and take a look at how my jig looks and see if that's good to go. Now it doesn't look perfectly aligned here, but you can tell that's probably from the camera angle. I know mathematically it's correct, so I'm not super worried but it definitely gives you a really good picture of how this jig is going to work. So I'm gonna go back into that layer. I'm gonna turn it off because I don't need it. And then what I would do from here is I would just start uploading my names. So in this example here, I have a bunch of different names. I've already set them up. I'm gonna grab a couple of them. I deleted anybody's real last name so you wouldn't um, be able to track anybody down, but here's their call signs. And then for these, what I would just do is usually line up my first one here. And I'm actually gonna change the colors of these so they don't match the green. I go in here and let's make them nice and bright. Turn off the stroke there. And then in my previous example, I actually had their wings as well. So some people wanted the pilot's wings and some people wanted, I think it's like co-pilot wings. So forgive me if I'm wrong about that. I know I had the right things because I proved it with the customer. And I'm gonna grab this, drop that in, get that aligned about where I want it, make sure it's its own color. And that's just so everything is a separate function. I'm actually gonna make it that color there. So what I would do then, the last step before uploading this, is I'm going to grab all of the names and I'm gonna to go to type, create outlines. The reason you do that is because your font is not going to load with your design and it's possible it's gonna get messed up. Remember, if you're using like a cursive script that you also will need to weld them together by selecting the names and hitting unite in your pathfinder function. Okay, so now that we have this file actually set up, I'm going to save it. And so I'm gonna hit command S or file save. I always save mine as a PDF, I just like PDFs. Um, you can also do an SVG, but I find PDFs tend to, because they're, they, they, they keep the artboard, whereas an SVG will just grab everything and keep it all together. The artboard helps make sure that things don't get scaled awkwardly when they're uploaded in the Glowforge interface. So I'm going to save this as clipboard PDF. Hit save, and then I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to open up this new file, and I'm just going to show you my settings real quick, and from there, we're pretty much done, because the rest of it's covered in the written post. So I'm gonna go back to my main area here, hit create, upload from file, and let's go find our clipboard PDF. There we go. So here it goes, might take a little second. And there we go. So you'll notice in this example of my jig, I didn't add the like rectangle box I did in this previous one. That's just because that's not necessary. You saw me make a rectangle. You guys know how to do it. You're good to go at that point. Um, in this case, what I would do next is I would either le I would either leave my jig exactly where I have it so that it will always upload in the same spot. Or if I decide to, I can move it around here and just get it where I want it to be. Um, for when I'm cutting it and then just cut it fresh every time. So just remember if you move this and then you do all your cutting and you come back later to engrave more, you're either gonna have to make sure you upload the stuff and realign it with where you put your original jig or you just cut a new one each time. I think that's covered a little more clearly in my written post. I know that's like not super clear me saying it that way, but it's it makes sense when you get used to working with a jig. So from here, I would then select my settings and you can see under engrave, I should have something called bronze powder coat. So bronze powder coat and what that means in this case, the powder coating on these steel or aluminum clipboards, I think they're aluminum, was super thick. So when I engraved them the first time, they came out with this sort of like bronzy antique color at this particular settings. Now the customer really liked that. I did warn them that when you do something like this, it, it will eventually kind of wear away to the silver or it may not look perfect going forward, but they were okay with that. Typically you would want to engrave so it goes all the way down to the silver and the entire powder coat is removed. In order to get that, you can either double your passes here 
and that worked perfect for a really beautiful crisp silver cut um silver and gray i said impression but not quite right um or i can actually lower my speed i always like to try to start at a thousand speed because engraves take forever anyway so you really want to go as fast as you can but in this case i would probably lower my speed a bit and then go back to one pass it's kind of up to you what you want to do you'll have to play with it because depending on what you purchase it may be different i know that this setting will engrave down to silver on other powder coated items so you do have to check this with whatever item you have and you'll notice in my other image when i go to place it just real quick just so we can see it you can see that i did test some other settings this was a thousand full power at a 450 lpi so increasing the lpi will also work you can see it still left a lot of burn stuff here so i probably needed to slow the speed down and then it will go to the silver um, to clean up the smoke around it all i did was use a magic eraser but this is my test board so i did kind of keep some different settings on here so let's go back to our interface and then i would do the same thing here so in this case bronze powder coat and then each time I left these, remember we're not cutting or doing anything with these right now. If we were cutting our actual jig, we would cut the rectangle out of the cardboard. But in this case, we're pretending that it's already done. And then all I had to do to swap these out was each time I would go in and I would grab the name and drag it away. But I do wanna show you this because it can happen. If you'll notice when I try to do it right now, I can't drag this out of the design. The reason for that is when you actually save and upload it with the name already in there and like lined up it thinks it's grouped as one object so i want to come back and show you that you actually need to move these out of the shape i don't know why it does this but that's glowforge for you um you have to take them out of the shape if you want to have control over how they line up with the jig in this case i'm not worried about this one so i'm going to undo that i'm going to resave delete all of this and then re-upload the artwork. Okay, that looks correct. And once this loads, you'll notice it's gonna load exactly where it did when it first um, came up. So here we go. Now I have control over these and I can click and highlight and drag them in to align them with my design. And then when I'm done, I can just, sometimes you gotta individually select the letters. In my case, you do because they're not connected by anything. Kind of a pain, a little bit. And then just drag them off the artboard when they're completed. So that's what I did. I just dragged one by one, engraved the designs, and then moved them out. So this is a really good way to use a jig. And then in between each design, all I did was I opened the Glowforge. I did not hit reset on my, um, on what, here we go on the uh, set focus. I did not reset that. You wanna make sure you're using manual for this. So I actually set the height as 0.5. Um, even though it's 0.47, you kinda can pick whatever. It's not gonna really make a huge difference here. Um, but all I did was always use the, um, gosh, I can't even talk today. Always used the manual height. So this is a new thing here. I don't know why it just guesses here or makes stuff up, but I always set it to manual and that way it wouldn't change the camera view every time. But in the end, no matter what, when the camera view would shift or whatever, I always trusted my alignment guides over the camera and that ensured that every single one of them came out perfect. So hopefully that gives you an idea of kind of how you can set up a jig and a couple of different techniques, especially the idea of using the photo and aligning it or adding lines or marks that you won't actually use to cut but that you'll use to align in the glowforge and then of course to serenade us out there's my cat um <laughs> thank you guys hopefully that was helpful if you have any questions just let me know